Hello, friends. I know the camera is quite a ways up there today. Um, I have a big project. I'm going to be doing it on a 1620 uh, canvas board. And um, this is my pattern paper here. I cut it out of the dollar store type of uh, cardstock, those big ones that you get poster boards. And it is exactly the same size as my um, watercolor paper that I'm going to be using for this project. And I wanted to tell you that this is uh, molasses, um, mollus. Oh, how do you say that? <sighs> okay, this is what we're doing today. There, paper mollus. And it's from Pam Am. <laughs> And I got the inspiration watching a video by um, R Rhonda Stern Hagen. Anyways, and um, so this is going to be uh, my work for the paper type of um, uh, molas, a half inch in on all sides to make a border. And then I'm going to cut that um, eventually. I mean, I'm going to draw that line down there eventually, and that's going to be our border. So, and this is a big project, to wind, but you don't have to do it in such a big uh, piece. I'm doing it in a big piece because I really want this to be like pow, you know, kind of like superhero pow, you know, Batman pow, and have it like. A really cool piece for me. Um, you guys could start small and do it on little cards or five by seven would be perfect for something to begin with. But you know me, I like to go big sometimes. So I'm going to do that. So now I have my lines and I'm just going to line them up. Then I'm going to choose my shape so I have my pencil and it's going to be oops fairly light I'm just thinking my pencil but I'm gonna to have to use we'll see how you guys can see it anyways this is my pencil I know that like there we go it's not that bad actually So I'm just going to go down here and do this one. I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to stop. I'm going to come back when I'm done with both of these. <coughs> so I have this down, and I'm somehow making a shadow with my, have this down, and I'm going to make um, some shapes here. I'm thinking, I'm using the, my upside down plate here. Laying. Okay, so I got that circle. Um, I'm probably going to. I want to make. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do this. I just do. I'm just making circles. I wanted. I gotta do something like. My first try, I gotta make it kind of easy on myself. So, let's see what we can do here. I could probably do some smaller circles. Let's see, do I want to do some smaller circles? Maybe. I'm going to see what I have. I have a lid over here. A couple of lids. So I could do... I could do smaller circle. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just kind of venting as I go along so you guys didn't see that totally, but that's okay. So I'm trying this. We'll see if this works. If it's too complicated for my first try. It just might be. I don't know. There we go. 
So that's what I have for first time off here. And I'm just going to put my lights down. And now what we're going to do is um, kind of sketch a space for the in between that. And it's got to be like about a half one uh well, half an inch, uh, a quarter of an inch. Yeah, a quarter of an inch. So let's go a quarter of an inch in and try our best to get it to be about a quarter of an inch. And then do that with all the shapes on the, the inner side and the outer side. And then we'll get more into the inside shapes um, going in and in and in to make our pattern. But we have to start with doing about a quarter inch and then it'll be about an inch like the border after, right? So, or half an inch together. So I'm just going to take my pencil, undo that with all of them. And if it's not perfect, it's going to be okay, but we'll just kind of get the best we can. And move your paper in all crazy angles because that's the way it works and it works good. So that's good. It's all good. As you can see, my circle's not perfect, but it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> and I'll come back when I get all of these done on the inside. All my circles are done on the inside. Now I'm just going to do the same, but to the outside. So I'm just going to do all of the outside like a quarter of an inch. And then they'll probably, hopefully, measure out to be about a half inch. So it's good. So now that I did the inside, I've got to do the outside. So I'll come back when I'm done all of the outside of my circle. This is what it's looking like now. So now what we have to do is blacken these here and the borders because that will be our black, I guess, um, paper. So we could either color them in um, with our pencil, or we can just totally use marker, it doesn't matter. But um, I prefer to save my markers, so I'm just gonna use my pencil and blacken them all in, because this is just my pattern, it's not what I'm using for the it's not going on my art, so it doesn't matter how good it looks. So I'm just going to blacken it in with my pencil. That way I'm saving on my markers and yeah. So I'm going to blacken this all up and I'll be back. Well, here we go. A pencil in. I kind of took my time and kind of colored it in with my pencil just to have fun with it. No reason why, I just did. I was like, oh, this is kind of relaxing. So I was doing that. But I didn't torture you with video, so it's penciled in. And now we're going to start with the inside marks. And we're going to go the same distance. And we're going to keep within um, a quarter of an inch in. And keep going in and in until our shape is done, until we get to this smallest that you know, we need it. I'm going to move some things in the way so I can move my paper around a bit better. And just take some time to do this. And so here we go. Um, if you make mistakes, don't worry, you have an eraser. Um, don't think that's just kind of want to make it a little bit wider. There we go. And don't know if you can see that, but I'm going to try to do that throughout 
and just keep drawing inside my shape here. And if it's not perfect, it's going to be okay. I could just erase a little lapse. Just like that. Turn my paper whenever I need to. And just do the best I can like that. And that's what I'm going to do. So you're just going to want to keep doing that inside each shape. So I'm going to continue with that, guys. because I want to use seven, no more than seven um, watercolor papers this size because they're pretty expensive and I don't want to use more than that so I'm trying to keep within seven pages and so that's why I was counting. So what we're going to do is number these um, from one to seven to the center and you're going to do each section so that's going to be a color of watercolor paper that you're going to paint. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's going to be each number is going to be the, the watercolor paper color. And that's what I said. I didn't want to go past seven. I don't want to like use up. I'm, I'm like, ah. That's a lot of paper, but I, it's going to be worth it. It's going to be a beautiful project. So now I'm going to do this section. One, two, three, four, five, and six. We're going to do this section here. One, two, three, four. And you're just going to make sure one, two, over here. One, two, three, four. Four, so fours are going to be the these center triangles here, if you can see that. And now we're going to number this one: one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to number this one: one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, 
four and five. Again, right here, just to remind us one, two, three, four, and that'll be five. So this one's got two, one, two here. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's why I took that triangle out because I did not want to have eight papers just for that little size. But so this is now our pattern. And what we're going to do is take this and cut out our shapes for our project with this. But first of all, take a break from this and I'm going to color my watercolor paper. So I'm going to grab my watercolor paper and I'm going to stencil color whatever and make it all beautiful. So it doesn't matter. It's The scraps are going to be used for something else and I'm just going to use it make it all beautiful and have fun playing with that. These are my seven layers. So this is my first uh, or my last one. And I numbered them on the back. So this is number seven. So I numbered them on the back. So I'm putting them um, backwards. So um, this is seven. This is my next layer. Six. So I'm hoping that this works out. It's uh, my kind of purple layer. And this one is red. And it's really bright. So I'm hoping it looks good. This one is my orange. And my orange and my yellow. So I did lots of stuff for that. This is my yellow layer. So... Um, my green layer, my blue layer. So I did all of my layers. There we there. So now I'm going to put them down. Um, so I'm going to put number one down first on the side. And then I'm going to put number two over the top of that. So here's number two. And then number three. So I'm going to keep them in order as I cut them. Number four. Number five. Number six. And number seven. Now I'm hoping that this works out. I didn't do a pre-trial of this. So the number seven. So that is all of my colors. So we're going to start cutting it. Okay, so what I did was I put my paper clips, paper clip my paper behind me. It's my number seven paper, so it'll be my black one. And I want to make sure it lines up perfectly. And I'm going to cut out my number sevens. And I've got two number sevens on here. I'm using a sharp X-Acto knife and craft knife. And I'm just doing that. So now we just got to go through the layers and cut all of the numbers. And that's what I'm going to do next. There's number seven coming up, but I'm wishing I had a better blade to cut through. Now it's starting. So this is the number six page. So I'm putting it on and then I'm going to do line it up like this. And I'm hoping this is going to work. I've done this right. So I'm going to put paper clips and I did the number seven. And this is what the number seven looks like. Paper. Cut that out. And if, now I'm going to cut out the next line, all the ones that I have that are sixes, which is this one, this one, and this one. So I will be doing that. cutting out the sixes. So I'll be back when I'm done that. Now I cut out number six. So it should go behind here like this and that layer like that. You can see that behind there. So I'm going to take my paper clips out. I'm not really showing you guys me cutting them each out, but you can imagine me cutting it out because the video is getting hugely long there's it's looking like so I'm hoping it's gonna line up exactly the same because I cut the board the same so this is what it's looking like so far 
This is layer six. And now I got to do four. Is that, uh, yeah, that's six. So now I'm doing five. And that will be this red. And I'm going to clip that on the same as before and cut all my fives. So I'm going to cut five, 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 and that five. And I will be right back after so that. So now I'm going to cut number five. Did I say that already? I think I did. <laughs> so I'm going to try to, oh, my blade's getting, I'm going to try to, I always cut away from my hand. And I'm going to try to get both layers, like the top here, the, the pattern, and the underneath layer. And I know I haven't been really showing you me cutting, but I got you guys kind of saw me speed through some drawing here. But it's basically the same thing. Make sure you get your cutting mat behind you. And try to keep on your lines. I'm a little bit off there, but try to keep on your lines. And that's about it. So I'm just going to do all of number five. And then I will show you what it looks like against the other colors. Here are all my number fives cut out. I'm going to show you all of the ones here that I have. I put those scraps to the side. You can use those for something else after. This is number five cut out, page five that I colored. You can see my five right there. It's upside down for you guys. <laughs> so I'm going to take this off. And take a look at it with the others. So now I have seven at the bottom, six, my purple, my lovely black and other multicolors. I kind of wanted to make it look cool like that. And now I have them all lined up. This is what I have so far. I'm thinking that I will have to maybe carefully ink some of the colors that belong with some of the white um, in the edges there when you cut it out. But this is it so far. And we are on number five, countdown to one, to zero, to one. So make them as straight as possible. They're not, they're perfect, not perfectly straight, but I didn't draw them perfectly straight either. So it's not too bad. So that's how that's looking so far. So now I'm going to do cut out number four. So I got to get my number four color, which I believe is my orange. Here's number four. There's my four. Flip it forward. So now I'm going to have it like this. Pin again my paper clips on so it doesn't move on me. The paper doesn't slide underneath or anything like that. And then where's my other paper clip? Right here. And then I'm just going to cut with my knife. My Again, doing all my number fours. And then I'm going to continue doing that. And I just move it around and cut all my number fours up. Number four is done. Now I've got number three. Let's look at it. <sighs> Coming together. That's how it's looking so far. Number th The three has kind of got the most odd little shapes here. Four had these triangles, pieces, so I've got, got a lot to do here with three. I'm just going to keep going and carefully cut it. I might go off the lines a little bit like I just did there, but I'm just not going to sweat it like as if I didn't do it and just keep going instead of going back and just keep going. I just did a little bit off the line there. So, go a little longer, see how that feels. Because I could pull, put some weight on my fingers here 
and try to study it like you know when you're drawing and you put a little bit oh, I don't know I kind of put a little bit of these fingers here again on the paper and I'm drawing so my knuckles so it, I'm doing the same thing as I'm cutting so I'm hoping that keep me steady and it seems to be working so far and I'm losing my clips I don't want to do that I don't want to move it too much here so you could put like harder clips on there things to hold it down harder like um, the clamp paper clips And I'm just going to follow it along. The best I can without trying to put too much, pull too much. I don't want to go cut across anything, any numbers. And that's what I'm doing, very carefully. very carefully pulling out number three isn't that cool it's number three and I'm just putting them on top of each other's scraps over there so I'm just trying to keep track of it number three done knocking things over Per usual number three is done guys look at that cool eh now I'm going to be doing number two so that's next cutting all of the layers on number two so let's just see here I'm just gonna put that to the side grab my number two which is my lovely this is number two. Oh. How it's looking. Now we're going to do number one. And I will be doing number one with this blue. And that's going to be number one. So I'm trying to figure out. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing here. So I'm trying to figure out if I want to do the edges on here black and I'm thinking it might look good. I'm doing the, the scraps now, edging them with archival ink. I see, of course, I said I was going to come back tomorrow, but I haven't stopped yet. So, so I, I'm doing that. And then if I do that, I might be able to just so the black, back black like I wanted to and kind of work it into the not being too harsh so like I'm like what am I doing what do I want so orange and then I have the red and I'm pulling some of these apart but I want to kind of don't want to lose any pieces I want to kind of compare with these pieces to see how they look on each other to see if I like it um, inked up I think I do. It's really hard to tell. I know it's really far up, but it kind of makes it pop, just like outlining anything. So the last one was the black, and that's somewhere in the bottom there. But I like it, so I don't know. Like, hmm. It's like, do I want to ink it? And I'm thinking I do. Trying to find my last one. Do I have which one was this? I do I should have a black? 
right here. And I wasn't sure I was actually thinking I was going to ink the edges with the colors I had them that they were. But now that I'm doing this, it's making it pop, I think. Kind of like that. So I might carefully ink all the edges black. Because they don't look bad on these colors that I've done. That's the reverse, but... It gives me an idea on how it's going to look. So now it's just kind of playing with it because I'm like inventing it as I go, really. Um, so I went a little more further black than I want on that. But that's what I think. So I'm thinking I will do it. Because this is really, really, I don't want to get anything racked. It's really nice, but it's not popping. So. I might have to do that. Hi. Now I know um, I have kind of jumped ahead. I just want to show you guys what I'm doing on the back is adding this cord. And this is the cord I have. I couldn't think of what I wanted to put on the back. Um, and I really couldn't think of what I wanted to put in the back that looked nice because I was thinking it might be seen to add a little bit more dimension to the project. So I'm just going to show you quickly. I'm still adding cord. And I'm going to show you these layers. i got a few more layers to do. But I wanted to show you the dimension that it gives. So it's just enough to lift it up a bit. And I really like that. And in the in the um, video that I was inspired by Rhonda, um, she put cardboard behind the, the pieces that she had, cut up cardboard, but I thought this would be more um, invisible type of thing and it'd be easier to curve around my, my project. And I know this cord can get a little bit expensive. This one was $17.99, but I think it's worth it to have a really nice project. So then here's the one here on the bottom that doesn't have cord yet. And I'm just putting it so then it's going to sit nice. Now I'm just going to show you guys the dimension. It just looks really nice. And oops, it's upside down. It pops. So just trying to get it all right here. And it's going to look really nice when it's done onto the canvas. I'm thinking, so I want to do that. Can you see the layers and the dimension? And you're going to be able to see that on the canvas and it's just a little bit, so it's not crazy. And I think it's going to look nice. So that's how it's looking with the cord behind it. So in this first layer here, I have the cord all behind here. Glued, a tacky glued. Well, I glued it with um, Aileen's tacky glue. Cut it. And that's how it's making the perfect form and I'm not having nothing sticking out or have to worry about a bunch of little pieces or anything. It makes it way easier. That's the first one. This is the second one. Um, got a, it's still thin enough. I'm thinking I can get away with just the cord like that. This next one here. I am doubling up the cord on my pieces here and making sure that I have, I'm going to do two more right here and making sure that it doesn't sag down. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to continue doing that. You guys, if you want to use cardboard or whatever you want to use or even just have it layered the way without having any space in between, it would look good too but I really think I wanted that dimension. So that's what I'm going for. And I think this is way easier than cutting a bunch of little pieces of cardboard as well to get what I want. And I thought the black, if you see it, the black would be perfect. 
So I was trying to think of what to put in there and I'm like, I knew I had this and I'm like, I need that cord. It's worth it, I think. So I've just been kind of going around measuring it like that by eye and just gluing it on. It's working really well. So I'm going to continue with this part. Here is the last piece with the string on the back. And if we're going to go look at how it's supposed to look. My canvas has still got to get done as well. Here's the first piece. It's a little still a little wet. I had to put um, change my glues, so I put more glue on because it wasn't as sticky as the tack glue, but my hand was getting sore from squishing that particular bottle. So I'm going to put my layers on. So this is the first one. I think, no, this would be layer seven. This is the first one. And so I just got to let it dry a little bit more. It's buckled a bit. Because, like I said, I had to put more glue on this one than the other layers. Here's the other layers. Upside down, we're good. And I think it's just enough lift to add a great dimension. Of course, it's got to get a little straightened out and that kind of thing, but that is it. Isn't that cool, guys? That's with all the string behind it, and it's still got to straighten out a bit, and that is the working. That's how it's going to look, the project, and I'm going to have the painted canvas as the background. And that's how it's looking. Pretty cool. I'll love it. So I'm just going to let this sit for a while and then I have to do the canvas or I can do the canvas while it's sitting. And this is the background with the uh, metallic lusters on it. I used the gold, uh, I mean the orange flicker, the red, um, blue, cobalt, the turqu turquoise, as well as, um, and I think that's it, yeah, so, and that's kind of like a, almost like a spacey story background, it's pretty cool, and that is going to be my canvas board, as well. This is the pieces on it. So now I just gotta measure it out perfectly to fit the way I want it to. And have everything matching just beautifully. And that's my goal now, is to get everything just right. So these are still warping, warping and I'm wondering if I have to let them totally um, dry more because they're still the ones I just worked on today. The ones I worked on yesterday are perfectly fine. So these two here are the ones I string glued today. So they are still need some drying time. And these ones are pretty much nice and straight. So I think these ones are gonna be fine. And I just gotta worry about these ones now. Come just dry and straightening out. I think I'm gonna go with a matte varnish with this. And with um, this is when we use and because I want to protect it, um, it's gonna be canvas. I think that's what I'm gonna see if this works. I know I do have the Gorilla Glue, but I'm getting, like I said, it's like getting hard a little bit. Just because I've been working my hands so much, really, not because of the glue itself. Um, but this is pretty done as well. But I'd like to get the Gorilla Glue open and painted on, but I can't get it open. Second layer, or third layer glued on now, so... Just using this to push so I don't get anything on my fingers on here. I 
this is now the finished product of that um, whole thing. It's all glued together. It's been um, varnished each page and then I sprayed varnish over it. Um, the one thing I don't think I would ever use again is Gorilla Glue. It was really seeping out and that was a pain so I had to get q-tips and kept uh, cleaning up what was seeping out here in the thinner pieces. That was a pain. So I just thought that the Gorilla Glue would make sure that it would stick better. Um, but it uh, it was more of a, I was sitting here for like a half an hour probably going like this all over trying to scoop up what was pouring out. So this is it. It is now done. Um, now I'm just going to let it sit for a bit and cure. And uh, this is how it looks. So I'm just going to put it close up. I don't have the greatest camera, but each, each layer of um, watercolor paper is designed, of course. You've seen, I kind of went through that really quickly with you guys, but you know how to do background um, techniques and whatnot. So this is how it's looking. Isn't that beautiful? And I put texture in the canvas behind. And I'm trying to show you guys the whole piece. It is very difficult to hold. I'm holding it up. Um, I don't have like any zoom. This is my um, webcam. This is the whole piece. And texture, visual texture, lots of that all the layers so there's seven layers of paper um this one black one here being the bottom layer and this is how it's looking here's the bottom layer and then the, the canvas layer so that is how it looks guys I did the cord in between um there's a layer on the top i'm, can't, I'm not gonna be able to show you all the layers kind of dry little warp and the Gorilla Glue swelled up so that's it like that but that's the layers and angle so it looks really cool and you can see the edges and I'm not going to cover those edges up I'm going to try not to move too much guys sorry these edges I'm just going to leave like that so this is it I'm going to flip to the side here and give you more of a view on there. You can see the view of the detail of the canvas as I'm doing this too. The uh, depth with the cord in between as layers. You can do cardboard as well. Like I said, that's what um, was done on a video that I got my inspiration from. They did just different color papers. They did a smaller, like 11 by whatever uh, computer paper type or stock paper is um, like colored paper and that is it here an angle so I'm just trying to show you guys at angles different angles the uh, depth of the piece and how look at how you can catch that you, the glue will dry <laughs> you can see some of it but it'll dry and it'll, you won't see barely see it so and it's still fairly wet you can see the angle and the depth there so it's hard to show but yeah, I think you're getting a little bit of what how it looks and I think it turned out pretty good and I'm very happy with it so there's a little glare there from I got varnish on it but I needed the paper to be protected so and that's that angle you can see in the bottom one right here like how it really this is the seventh layer cut out right here it looks pretty cool so this is it now um, I have all my other pieces that are left so I can still do a reverse 
canvas to go with this one with all the leftover pieces and having um, this um, last piece or like you know kind of having that space and that would be canvas that you see through so you kind of see it the reverse and that would be pretty cool too I'm not going to do that on video I will do that on my own but um, the video is mostly for this one so this was my molas 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 um, I think it's called that molas <laughs> video from um, art from Pam Am and I hope you guys like it don't forget to craft like a duck and yeah I guess I will talk to you guys later and I really really hope you enjoyed this one this one took a lot of time but it was only two days actually but and like a lot of work on it a lot I just kind of did it and did it and um, just continue doing it throughout the night <laughs> so just to get done of course normally you don't have to work on your art that quick but to get videos out for you guys that's the only reason I have to work so hard at it but I am very pleased with the results and I hope you guys give it a try you can try it with um, I was thinking about it last night you can do um, like mod um, collage you can do collage of red um, uh, magazine paper, red, different red things. You can do all the different colors that you do in collage. I was thinking that would be a neat idea too. And then having your layers of collage paper and you do your design, your pattern design that I did here. And you can do any kind of pattern. This is this one I chose, right? And um, you, you just work from there. So you can do collage paper and you can have it like um, a smaller piece and then do your say you did all the purples and you did a whole collage piece of purples and then whatever you cut out I mean it would make it really look really unique you could put paint on or whatever splatters and do all the colors if that's something inter interests you guys that's an idea but anyway this is my piece and I hope you guys like it don't forget to craft like a duck and I'll talk to you guys later bye bye <laughs>